This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 494. We are live, myself at least, live from here at Sorgatron Media Studios. That camera's not on right now. Uh, Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Um, <laughs> where I did not turn all the cameras on for my sweet side shot. But anyways, we are here and everything is completely just fine. It's just fine guys uh we got with <laughs> us we got the crew with us tonight first of us first of all from studio c in the big d it is john chichilla gadget guru of big bank international esquire how are you tonight sir so we, what you're saying is we're six away from 500 what's that yes yeah, so we're six away from episode 500 and and wow i think we're about three weeks away four weeks from um from uh, uh, our 10th anniversary Wow, that, that's a lot of episodes. That's a lot of episodes. That's a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, is, uh, Chilla, how you doing? How you doing? Good. You got special delivery. We'll talk about that a little later. I did. <laughs> it's some of it's in my belly. Don't tell anyone that I ate too. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a good conversation with your son about what's happening with that delivery uh, for lunch and, tomorrow. And I, and I secretly just hang out all day in my pajamas too. So you're you're the only one that knows that. I hope I got that on video. We got we'll have a special video we'll be doing at at a, at a later point here. Also back with us is from uh, Studio Dutters is the <laughs> Dutters. Hi, I I actually got even though I did not get to be part of your cool special delivery, I had my own special delivery yesterday from John Carmen. Oh really? Oh, was what? that that? What you what, tell people what you got? I I should have brought it over. Uh, I so I I had a I received a I a message that I had a delivery dropped off. I had a bottle of bleach dropped off by a masked man who ran away. Uh, was <laughs> what I was. Wow! It must and be I, John Carmen. Yeah, it was it was a Punisher mask. I didn't realize it was a Punisher mask, which would have made okay. the story even better. So yes, John Carmen stopped by in a Punisher mask and dropped off a bottle of uh, bleach for me. And some, they're called PSI bands, and they're supposed to help with nausea that you wear on your wrists. Oh. I haven't had a chance to try them today because um, I, did, I, I did my chemo earlier in the day today. And usually I don't feel side effects the day of. It's usually a couple of days after. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious and give it a shot. I, I appreciate sort of the scheduling around the show like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I do it in the morning because Fantastic. I know I feel bad late, you know, Tuesdays and later in the right, week. You know, so right. This is, this is the highlight of my week. Fantastic. <laughs> The, the high, the, the lows and the highs, and then the lows again when you get back to us. And yes, um, so, sorry, I, I showed something because I thought I thought that's what we were talking about on your Instagram. There was another care package that came in the other day. I saw. I, I just oh, saw. Oh yeah, as well. no, no, that was a, that was a different care package. That was not a jo mass John Carmen. Okay. Care <laughs> so because I'm like, oh yeah, I saw that. I'm like, oh no, that's not the thing. Um, I, I wish you had a ring doorbell so you had the video of that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Mass man drops off bleach, totally fine, and then runs away. It's a, this, welcome to the new normal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, much. back with us. Well, back with yeah, you've been on here before. You have been, been right? On before. Right? Kim Apparently, Lyons. it was more memorable for me. Than I mean, I I don't know what what job you had then, but you got a new one yet. Who again. knows? <laughs> <laughs> That's the cadence. We just have you on. I think you were with inside uh, uh, emails last time, and yep. now. So whenever I get a new job, I have to come on and reestablish my cred i guess we right? do the same thing with bobby cherry yeah yeah <laughs> I, it's, Fair, yeah it's, it's an awareness thing it was like hey i got a new job i'm like bobby it's been a while since you've been on the show it's just like you yeah. know uh, top of mind <laughs> yeah yeah yep. Get that, uh, you gotta do that branding uh tell people what you're up to these days so i am the weekend editor at the verge yes. these days yeah which is very cool and let me tell you the people that i work with at the verge 
they are like your people, Mike. Like they are what processor does the new iPhone <laughs> SE have in it? Is Snapdragon what number? Seriously, like they know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the deets. So I am learning a lot, which is good. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, they let me, you know, they give me the keys to the car on weekends and sort of let me run the show. So that's been fun and interesting and just writing a lot more because I had, you know, the past couple of jobs I've had, I haven't had as much opportunity to be writing. Mm-hmm. So really glad to be in a position where I can do a little sort of a little bit of both. So yeah, it's been good so far. Uh, it, it's it's been a it's been a fun, well the verge is is a site that I read since the beginning because I think it was a bunch of people from Engadget came over yeah. at the time yep. and I was following them you know and and yep. and, and that became and still in a regular rotation along with a bunch of the tech sites for this show but uh, I, I've had the phenomenon happen where I'm going through I'm I'm, I'm going through like Apple News. Or, or the newsletter or something and i was like and, and i'm like this is a really good story i'm going to share this on the thing and then i look up and i see your name and that's been a weird <laughs> thing and i'm like wait a minute wow wait a minute <laughs> yeah so. i'm a big deal now you know so <laughs> so that's been yeah. that's been a uh that's been a uh interesting um side effect of that too so yeah well that's uh, cool a friend of mine the other day said he listened to a podcast and uh, they were talking about a story that i had written specifically the one i wrote about the murder hornets. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, my murder hornet story was, I think, my most viewed <laughs> story today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, right? Oh, what is that? <laughs> Katie is moving ad-ats over there. Murder hornets. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I needed the ad-ad to protect me from the murder hornets. <laughs> yes, it's like, oh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, those murder hornets. well we're getting into some awesome things that are not ho- murder hornets uh here in the show of course please check out everything at awesomecast.com and uh and uh please uh subscribe to us the awesome cast on your podcast provider whether that be apple podcast google podcast stitcher spreaker wherever you want to hear us iHeartRadio, radio we're over there as well um and you can uh follow us there follow us on the facebook the facebook page and the group are really important uh especially the group we, we have a lot of great discussion a lot of sharing the stories some of kim's stories have been shared over there because i'm going through her list i'm like i've shared this like i've definitely shared this and not realized um <laughs> so go over there and there's actually a few that are featured here today that will um uh that you guys have submitted uh please subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app if you are seeing us live we are on periscope we are on facebook we are on youtube and uh, if you can hit a like, hit a share for that for people that want to join us live or if you're listening on whatever device or, or site, please share us as well if you like what's going on. And of course, we're li- that's because we're live here Tuesday, uh, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on those platforms. Uh, thank you to our audio partners, our friends at the 405media.com, streaming us every day at noon Eastern time, every weekday. And our friends over at postindustrial.com also doing some great work as well and sharing some pittsburgh podcasting thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast our friends at the coffee club level uh matt weller john diggy DeGore, and john carmen matt well matt i saw you the other day playing some jackbox um so appreciate that i know you were doing a little bit of like this is all you need to get on here uh kind of thing and uh and and, and that was, that's awesome that you're getting on the jackbox side of things um on our fan of the show level thank you to Katie's favorite Fedor, Michael Fedor, and our friends at pghmuseums.org. You guys support the show, too, at patreon.com slash awesomecast. And thank you, everybody, uh, for uh, supporting this show and, and supporting, of course, Wrestling Mayhem Show supported through Patreon. And, and like, on a- like on average, the past like six months have been like our biggest Patreon uh time since we've started this thing and and thank you everybody and 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 really appreciating that i haven't seen those numbers really uh drop at all with everything going on so thank you so much for supporting the show uh as we uh continue to endure through through everything that's going on right now so enough of that enough of the sad stuff uh let's go <laughs> let's uh, uh talk about our awesome things of the week we got robots we got zooms we got an app let's start with an app with dutters here today okay now I don't normally give this out because I love this app that much. Oh, oh no. <laughs> you don't you don't want it to be you don't want it to be soiled by Yeah. It's well it's more of like it, it's it's a great app and um I don't want everybody to have it because I like having I not see that makes me sound horrible. I'm not a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start over. Okay. But um so uh, it, I I've been doing this thing and I have a good bad habit of sliding into my friends' DMs with social media, mm-hmm. uh, especially if I see there's a way that I can offer a suggestion, 
I just I'm I'm in your DMs and offering you advice and and what you call or what you call an unsolic- unsolicited social media advice? No, I was calling. Time. Can I use the D word? <laughs> <laughs> Sure, sure. The the dick pic of uh, social media. Oh, okay. Uh, or DM, yeah, <laughs> of social media DMs. I just slide into your DMs and offer you social media advice uh, randomly because I like you. <laughs> um, but uh, so a lot of times I I, I do I, I will if I see one of my friends are starting to do something and I just they, that's the thing is just definitely encourage your friends especially right now with the downtime we have if you see they're doing something awesome on social media uh one of my friends is an amazing makeup artist and she started doing videos and instagram live of her doing makeup tutorials and her personality is fantastic it's not she's so relatable sometimes she has a beer but she's gorgeous and she's so good at her you know what she does and it's just the perfect combination and her personality is amazing so i i i ended up sliding into her dms and saying hey you need to put more of you out there people mm-hmm. are going to love mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. so make sure you, you know you're encouraging your friends because everybody needs that push every so often I, you're like i i i've had that where um um uh we'll, we'll mention later chachi has been doing the pickle show and there's like a mm-hmm. certain point i'm like you need to tiktok this you need to tiktok yeah. the reactions and put the music that you're feeling right now would be, oh, amazing. That'd be amazing. Would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, 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 it's it's great brainstorming. Um, but one of the things I suggest for a lot of folks who are putting things, especially on Instagram and using hashtags, there's an app called Spacey. It's S P A C I E. Um, clean line breaks because one of the most pain in the butt things about posting things on Instagram is you can't put n- nice breaks in between paragraphs mm-hmm. or in between hashtags. So it's this ugly mess of stuff. And, um, I, when I do my Instagram videos of the updates of how everything's going with me, I, I use this app so I can do like bullet points of like the highlights of what's going on because it's something, you know, you may not, you may be interested in a certain part of the video, but not the whole video or just the quick snippets. And, um, so that's how I do this, but the app is called spacey. It's $3. It's that's it. And I've, I've totally paid for itself a bajillion times over. It's, it's, because- it's also on the uh, app store preview. So, Ooh. like, if, from what I'm seeing, oh, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm on the App Store preview is the website version of the App Store that I'm on here. My bad. Oh, you're fine. But it's, it's great because like things that you put in, and this also works for Facebook too. Mm-hmm. Um, so you just type in what you do, hit return when you want a line break, and then you can make it bold or italicize certain words. So it's a really nice tool, and then essentially it converts it. It goes into your clipboard and then you paste it and you have your nice line breaks and your gaps between your hashtags and your story. Or like I said, if you want to do, I do a lot of bullet points with this because it's a nice clean thing and it's not a giant mess on Instagram. And cause we've all seen those posts where it's just like, Oh, this is painful to look at. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, uh, I want to read this, but I can't. So wait, so those aren't, are they, they're not split. Yeah. Cause I'm doing my stuff through creative studio on the, on the website. Right. So mm-hmm. that's, and that's, and I think I have gone back and seen all that kind of muddled together. It's strange that that isn't even taken. No, it's really, really weird. Like it's, it doesn't play nice. And you, the things, the, the intuitive things that you think you should have mm-hmm. um, in like Instagram and even Facebook, it's just mm-hmm. not there. And like I said, this makes it nice and clean. And I've, I've really, really liked using this app and it's super easy to use. Awesome. So that is Spacey, so check it out. S-P-A-C-I-E over on the app store, $3.00. And uh, that is worthwhile if you're doing a lot of Instagramming over there. Mm-hmm. So awesome. Uh, let's roll down. Uh, uh, Chilla, what is your awesome thing over here? So I don't know about you, but in the current state of the world, I'm constantly pulled into 52 different types of meetings. And I don't just mean different types of meetings. Like, I mean, different meetings on different platforms. It could be mm-hmm. a Hangout today, a WebEx tomorrow. I've been asked to join zoom meetings team meetings i haven't gotten any jitsi ring central amazon <laughs> chime i have been on a go-to meeting okay but so there's an app that will integrate with your your mac and the and the apple calendar mm-hmm. and this is primarily focused at mac right um but it will actually put up in your toolbar kind of all of your upcoming meetings and Ooh. it will let you join them from whatever application etc 
you need to join them from. It'll have your link right up there. You can use, if you want to call in, you can actually use like the call through feature. I don't know if you've ever taken a phone call from your, your iPhone on your Mac. Yes, I have. Yes. I, I do it do it more often than I would have ever thought I would, um, even calling out. Um, but it will let you use that as well as you can tag like people that you frequently call um, and put them right up in the taskbar. Um, the one cool thing is it's free. Mm. Um, so even if you if you don't think you're going to use it and just want to give it a shot, you can always remove it. Um, who knows if tomorrow the app developer may decide to charge for it. Um, so if you pick it up now, you'll get to keep it for free. But I thought it was a it was a pretty cool concept. And even from a quick view of hey, what meetings do I have upcoming? Um, it's become extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, I, I say now now is the time with the biggest flux of you're, you're getting hit with those so this is interesting so, you, so this is all within one organization that you work for it's multiple no i'm not using it for work i'm actually using it for like connecting with friends oh, and yeah, connecting yeah, yeah. with family and yeah. connecting with it, at work we're pretty much one maybe two uh, that's uh, going to kind of systems the, you know big bank international i couldn't imagine them uh dipping into too many but you know what i do i do meet with vendors unfortunately i can't bring my own software we have to yeah. get everything internally approved yeah. yeah um but even at home like we'll have a google meet for something and then we still know people that you know use hangouts yeah. we still i actually know a few people that use teams um because it's also free and then zoom of course because it's zoom mm -hmm. um i've been interested in setting up my own jitsi server <laughs> i have too a little and bit. you can run it i think you can run it in a docker container so you uh, kind of jitsi is is, is a open source run your own server version of doing like a zoom or a google meet kind of thing yep and it's like oh that seems like a good idea but it's just like yeah no i shouldn't really be maintaining something like that on top of everything else right <laughs> so yeah but it's just like i would love everybody to go to you know what team.sorgatronmedia.com you know slash awesome cast and that's how we get in the meeting for the week or something right that that's the one thing that was pretty cool about zoom zoom you can have vanity urls that's the one extremely surprising thing and i'm sure it'll come over time mm -hmm. but google meet i'm surprised because you have a g suite account mm-hmm I'm surprised they don't give you like a a a vanity URL that you can use. Yeah, yeah, I, it's uh, th I think those features are hitting pretty hard, pretty quick with with Google Meet though, um, because I know I know I just saw it show up in my regular non G Suite Gmail today. I'm like, well, here we go. Uh, so I'm wondering how long though will they leave it as free, mm -hmm. um, or as long as Zoom stays free, I could see them leaving Meet as free. Yes. Um, but if there starts to become a charge for any of these platforms. Google Meet uh, has, oh, Kim, I think you wrote about this. <laughs> I did, actually. I, I believe it's free until September, correct? Yes, that is my understanding. And I was th I was wondering, you know, they have uh, Google One. So if you want to pay for like the extra storage, I wonder if they would. Yeah. Attach a paid version if you have a Google One account. Like, yeah. yeah, I would think at some point they'll probably look at what Zoom is doing at that point, mm. um, you know, and, and see if it's worth it. But, I mean, they've gone through so many iterations, Meet, Duo, Hangouts, Hangouts, Meet. Like, it's like, if uh, I hope they just have settled on this one and let's just yeah, can roll we just with this for now. Roll with this. We They finally, after like 10 years, got me off of Hangouts. Uh, to do meet, but also we we're, we pay for G Suite for email, so it's just like I'm like, wait, 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 do we have this? Like, I literally did not know that we had Google Meet as an option. And yeah, of course, they, two weeks later, it's like, oh, it's in my email now. Yeah, so, they started basically forcing it uh, yeah. into people's faces this yeah. past like week or so. Yeah, it's just is like, Allo still out there? Probably. Allo is no more. Actually, Allo is no more. I no checked; more. it's not. <laughs> they just continue. It's on somebody's poor phone that hasn't updated in two years. Right. Exactly. Uh, that's where <laughs> that's where it is. Um, and somebody, somebody out there is like, I love this. Don't change it. Um, yeah. so if let's Google, talk. If Google makes it, wait 10 minutes and they'll change it to something else. <laughs> right. It's true. And then when everyone gets on it, then they'll get rid of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cough, cough. AKA Google reader. reader. <laughs> um, so we got two stories about robots. 
uh, 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 Kim, let's go with yours first. And we actually did touch on this last week um, that I think Brian Crawford had shared uh, this as well. Uh, but worth definitely touching on again because I think it's it's kind of a cool thing come, happening here in Pittsburgh. It is really cool. So Carnegie Robotics uh, reached out to the CEO of the airport. They had already had this working relationship on some other tech they were doing. Um, and the CEO of, the, of Pittsburgh Airport, um, Christina Casota, she's really like, just such an energetic, like mm-hmm. really the person you want in that job. So anyway, they connected with Carnegie Robotics and um, they had this idea to use UVC light. So it's a, it's on the spectrum. It's this sort of lesser known part of the UV light spectrum. And basically it's been shown to kill um, other coronaviruses. Now, whether it's going to work against this coronavirus is still not clear, but they put the lights on the autonomous robots, cleaning robots at the airport. And so once it goes through its cleaning cycle, then it goes, it will put the, apply the UV light um, and kill the virus. Now, potentially that it could be like a test model for other airports to use these robots and use these UV, UVC lights. And I actually was trying to, t- to talk to the CFO of Carnegie Robotics this story, but he was so busy because there was so much interest from other airports about the robots. So that's pretty cool. Um I think it's just a cool story because it's like Pittsburghers figuring out how to do stuff. Mm-hmm. I always love to write those stories. And I think, you know, it's it's similar to what they're doing in the New York City subway right now with the UV lights. It's that same principle, that same tech. So it will be very interesting to see in the next couple of weeks, you know, um, if, if there's results there and if it's working. Because, you know, airports really need to encourage people that, hey, it's safe to fly. It's clean at the airport. But mm-hmm. I think everyone, it's going to be a little bit tough sell for a while. So this might be something to make people feel a little less nervous when they have to fly when things start opening back up i i appreciate this shot where the one guy's getting interviewed and it's like it's sneaking up behind him around the corner yeah. it's like can i just yeah i want a gif of this later <laughs> yeah and they're like you know like some robots i will say like some of the boston robotics the one the dog and the, oh. they're like creepy to watch them move these robots are slow yes non-menacing yes you know yes. like i'm uh, not worried about it like turning on me suddenly so which which, which nice rolls soothing robots which yeah it's, it's more like it's more like a small kit right well speaking right. of the boston robots so, so we talked about last week about how i think in, i think it was in boston where they were using them to uh take in corona patients with mm-hmm. by taking one of those dogs and putting an ipad on it so it like comes in and the doctor talks to you over the ipad that's not creepy when you're already no, sick and concerned I'm sure people love that bedside manner. so why not use that to your advantage because my awesome thing is this week i love we're just this is so many uses for them Segway. in <laughs> singapore of all places uh the robo dog is telling singapore park goers to keep their distance yeah. So as and there's a video of this and the reactions are fantastic here and I this think the video is so funny. It's it's so they're try they're oh it's not loading. There we go. So it's there and there's a voice going on it and uh and and as they go by just reminding people, just reminding people to keep their distance. Yeah. As you go by. I would Nothing wreck like my getting yelled bike. at by a robot dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw That's the damnedest dream, right? thing. I saw the damnedest <laughs> thing. It, 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 they're all here to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really can't wa- uh, look at this thing without thinking that episode of Black Mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the video's over there. We'll have the link in the show notes, of course, as as usual. Um, so I, I like that we both have robots this week. I, and this is the thing. And, and, and again, back on your story, like I, I, I have heard this so many times, and I always love it hearing tech news in a podcast, and Carnegie Mellon comes up. You know, it's kind of like, yeah, for the home team. Uh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, hometown geeks. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and like, there's a lot going on with like the hometown company right now. Like, like there's a team over at Pitts is legitimately one of the contenders to make a vaccine for coronavirus. Like, they mm. could potentially be making the vaccine right now. Like, there's a lot going on. I think people, you know, we know it because we live here, but I think I'm always happy to remind people of how much cool stuff's going on in Pittsburgh. Yes. Absolutely. Um, especially, yeah, especially right now here in that, uh, in the, in the regular news about, about yeah. everything that's going on. Well, Hey, you know what? Pittsburgh's also <laughs> for uh, some really good pizza. Our good friends here at slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh pizza with the perfect Pittsburgh pep, pep wait, Pittsburgh pizza with the perfect, yeah, for the perfect podcast. I'm just going to go with it. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com. Uh, they are still doing takeout and delivery, of course. Thank you, everybody, supporting them. They look like there was a lot of people waiting for their uh, stuff. Today. Not as much, not as much as the Olive Garden on Mother's Day, but uh, <laughs> but I, I didn't see them on Mother's Day, so I was visiting my mom and responsibly. I gotta say, responsibly and distancing and 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 mild hugs uh so uh but no our good friends over there slice on broadway uh four locations if you're around pittsburgh you can get it one way or another if not directly a delivery uber eats and everybody carries that as well grubhub uh so you can get it uh wherever you may be so and we have a special video i I, I say i visited um uh uh, kim and chilla today uh with because i felt bad because it's been like two months since people have been in the studio to to have the sponsor pizza, so we had some extra today, and we uh, uh, got to visit uh, a little bit. So look for that. We're hoping to put a little something together for you guys on the social media in the coming days. Uh, did you get my dog in there too, Mike? She I, was think I, to see the <laughs> I think I she did. I think I did. Like pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> very exciting. Um, but anyways, so we have uh, well, before we have a, our our uh, our group uh, submitted a lot of stuff this week, but also give a shout out to our buddy Chachi. Not only is he still going the game journey, um, he is in week two of uh, the game journey dot com. By the way, he is in week two of put a pickle on it, and I'm so happy I did not do a video a, a video intro for him because this this clip art uh, top hat pickle card that he made for the beginning of this is wonderful uh so he is putting a pickle on food items that people are recommending today it was putting a pickle on pudding yeah uh <laughs> this is this so is, i i think this is the perfect opportunity for for a mashup and and chachi can put a pickle on slice i think he can get sliced with pickles so i don't know how outside the box that was if we, what if he put a pickle on a pineapple uh, uh hawaiian pizza Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it's very divisive, <laughs> and it's it's alliterative. I, I don't know that yes. I can get much on board beyond that. Though. I almost yeah. hurt myself with the pudding one. So, uh, <laughs> and you see how I did with the tagline today. So go check it out. That's uh, put a pickle on it uh, over on YouTube. He started a whole channel for it and everything. I love it. I love it. It's great. Uh, that is his quarantine project, apparently. <laughs> Not counting the quarantine project that he went into it with. All right, let's see what you guys put in the uh, Awesome Cast Facebook group this past week. Um, first of all, let's go to Brandon over in Kansas City. He had this great story um, about a new way to play board games. It's called the Play Table. It's available over at GameStop. And and I was looking at things. So I think it's so the idea is it's it's a it's it's a tablet. It's like a iPad tablet kind of situation. And, uh, and, and the thing is, when you look at this on the pictures, you just like, it's a tablet. What's a big deal. But once you get into like, there's a picture at the bottom here, you can get into where you see everybody around it. And you realize like, this is like the first consumerized version of the, um, Microsoft surface table that we saw years ago in R and D, you know, what I'm talking about Chilla. I saw one. Of, well, I saw one of the updated ones when I was there in November. Uh, yes, exactly. But, this, <laughs> but let's say this is a three hundred dollar consumerized mm-hmm. version of that idea for board games. And then you think, well, why don't I just use my tablet for board games? But it, it's bigger, and, and it's also showing that you can use your phone to interface with it for the board games, which makes a lot of sense when you need, like hide cards or something like that, right? Um, it, it says three hundred dollars. They have Let's see. They had a list of games. Uh, Catan, Catan, and Ticket to Ride are um, are a part of it, and I think you get a few other ones as well. So and you can also play against the AI because this is my problem. I had lots of board games, but I didn't have friends to play Ooh. them with. Now you got. Now you're tickling my fancy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's. It also feels like like is this the um um an evolution of the Pac Man cocktail table game do you, do you know so you can play against ai do you know if you can play remote i have no idea i i, I <gasps> kind of doubt but like i feel like this is more of a home situation a home everybody's here situation um it's talking about connecting your phone to your uh to your phone and home speakers uh so so you can like push the audio out uh, from the game a bit more uh they have oh wait 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 it's breathing new life into your collectibles amiibo skylanders infinity and lego dimensions uh, by enabling on Playtable Reconnect, 
so your your amiibos and infinities and disney infinities like out the door like i, I think they're done with them but, it, but apparently they'll connect with this in an interface with the board games interesting that's awesome because like i have i have a lot of the marvel ones when they were on sale yes at at, at toys r us remember that company yeah. <laughs> <laughs> toys r us oh Dude, yeah. so this is this is super interesting to me I wonder what the price is going to hike up to and how much the games are per piece. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Uh, Brandon just has the uh, game, the GameStop article in here, so that might, it might be worth some some uh, uh, digging later. So, uh, Chilla, Patrick Johnson responded to your video. We did a, a clip out of when you were talking about the DSL cameras. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, to use them as a, as a webcam. And uh, he reminded us that apparently with a web update, uh, uh, your, your Wise camera now has a webcam driver. Yeah, so with a, it's a firmware update. You, yeah. you you load over the firmware that's on there, and it turns it from a. Now you do need like the double ended. What would it be? USB. Double. Yeah. Well, I mean, it comes with the USB because you plug that into a plug thing, in order to power the thing. But do we need like a different one? Is that not? Do you need the? Do you need the other end? I what? can't remember. Well, I thought there was something to it to get the firm to to do something. I thought you needed a different, different dongle. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Yeah, um, I, I mean, if you're you, if you have a new Mac, yeah, you're going to need some a, a, an adapter. You yeah. need a new dongle. But uh, so but but so that, I like that idea because like then it it, it is it is a what is it still thirty twenty five thirty five dollars and you have a, like a nice webcam. I mean, I haven't used it in a webcam capacity. I mean, but I mean, the picture's always been great for security. So versus a seventy dollar uh, Logitech C920 that nobody can get anymore, which is like the ideal. This might be a nice alternative for people. Oh yeah, super nice. And th- those those devices, I think, are still in stock. Yeah. Unlike most webcams. In fact, I was looking at the what's the Atom? It's the Atom Two something. It's the switcher. Oh, the the uh, the small switcher. It's like it's like a, a, a four hundred dollar version of what I have here. Um, that just USBs in, and you're good to go. Right? Yeah, it's like the Atom Mini. Yeah, yeah. From it, Black Magic, it's like two hundred ninety five bucks. There is no one that has that thing no. in stock. That thing was out of stock before people had to run on them, and people mm-hmm. are using those to just like link into their Zoom. So they can show stuff off more efficiently. So like not just like a webcast, like, like it, that kind of thing would be perfect for a webcast like this. If you're doing that at home. That's, it, that's the one thing that I could definitely use with work because it does come in with as a webcam. Mm-hmm. Um, I can, I can bring that in. It, um, and, yeah. and then I could connect like an iPad or whatever I wanted up to it. I, I wonder if black cool. magic is finicky. Yeah, devices across the board are very finicky with resolutions. I would be curious if an iPad would still work with that, because like it doesn't work with our our ATEM. Um, okay, but again, it's it, it, and that's you know stuff around that price range we've had problems with as well. So well, um, and I, well it would be interesting. So I could load. Can I load a Apple TV into the ATEM and then if it's the same resolution broad, as your and cameras, then broadcast. If it's the same resolution as your cameras, yes. Yeah, and then yes. broadcast my device to that. Our problems, last geeky thing, and I swear we'll move on. Uh, <laughs> we, we all of our cameras are running at uh, 1080i or ish or 24. Oh, yeah, you know, 1080i is the issue, and then you can't change the iPad from i to p to progressive, which is higher resolution technically, and then it just won't. It just doesn't work because it needs everything to be the same thing across the board to work with with our system. And again, not testing the new one. I would hope it's more flexible, but knowing black magic it probably isn't. So we'll see. All right. What else we got here from the group? Um, I wasn't sure if I understood this one entirely. Brian Crawford sent one. Stanford scientists have created a sound so loud it instantly boils water. <gasps> water microwave. How does that work? Water, <laughs> water sound microwave. No more waiting to get my spaghetti boil ready. This is, I'm sure that's not the application, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it'll boil water and it will, um, it, it, what's interesting is the shockwave, and this is from the article here at, at CNET, uh, the shockwave is, uh, is strong enough that it's easy to see how it is clearly disturbing a stream of water 
Yeah, if it's just like shooting through a stream of water, like from a spigot, um, but not enough uh, that the molecules completely break down as they do to the point where the contact with a powerful X-ray. So it's like this weird medium thing. So I, I don't know what your, <laughs> I, I I don't know what where they're going with the um, goal of this, um, but I'm <laughs> sound definitely has evil genius like evil villain yeah it super feels like villain dr evil like there's definitely a vibe around it like you know sound or sound based down his demand for a million dollars then he boils their water <laughs> you know? well, it, it, well it's like you know don't boil the ocean oh watch me yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it does it does feel like it a little bit so um thanks thanks for scaring us brian uh <laughs> <laughs> We need something else to worry about. <laughs> this was shared by my mother. Has she been in the chat room yet? I haven't seen her yet. Uh, but uh, she she shared this. Uh, I think this was an ad on Facebook. Or am I, how am I shared her? I don't know. Wherever this came from. But uh, and, and this makes a lot of sense as we are um, doing a lot of outdoor, uh, I'm sorry, takeout kind of situations. Although I love, I love the first thing they show out here is somebody dealing with money. But it is a tray, a car tray that fits on, that hooks to the bottom of your wheel. So you can do whatever business or eating or money counting, I guess, uh, with this. Um, also linked here, and I think, Missy, you probably found this alternative one as well, right? Yes. Uh, so this is one that goes on your count, your console more? or so. Oh, no, this is, a, this is a couple of them. So the Cut Queen steering wheel desk, which is only $12. That's really functional. And okay, I would drive right off the road. Like I would be like, <laughs> trying to tweet, "Oh my god, that's so funny, Bobby!" And then I would drive off the road. It would Wait, be Bobby's fault somehow. You're not supposed to use it while you're driving. It's like I'm sitting at Sonic. Okay, there's a desk in my car. I'm not going to use it while I'm driving. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for this to pop up at, at, at on rush hours. So my my thing is <laughs> is uh, with, with my with one of my old jobs that really talked a lot about mindfulness. Um, when we did our podcast and social media, there was a big thing was everybody eats in their car and that's like a really bad thing to do, right? And now it's like, now we're, it's really kind of, it's a better thing to do versus the alternative right now. Like we, re I returned back to it because of the current situation. Um, so, and we're going to get a desk to help out with it. I, I really kind of want this desk too. Um, so they, so they have two of them. This is the cut queen steering wheel desk. That's $12 over on ReviewGeek.com that we have linked. And then there's another one for $200, the auto exec roadmaster car desk. And this appears to go on. It looks like it goes over the console here. I'll throw the picture up here. It goes over the console and then there's like a file folder situation behind it. What? This is this is if you're this is if you're like some kind of inspector or something that that does a lot of road work, like because <laughs> like like you're um um an insurance um actuator or something, right? And and you have to have all the files and everything, and that that kind of makes a lot of sense actually. So can I bring that on my rent of cars when I go on my work trips? That could be fun. Could at, be at, at what point do you just get a Winnebago and have your office there with you? <laughs> Or just get someone to drive the car for you and work in the back seat. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> that's also a thing. Yes, yes <laughs> that is a thing. Uh, that 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 is the Uber option for sure. That, that second one, that, that it almost looks like it's a printer on the bottom or something. It looks like you could put a printer on it, right? <laughs> like there's enough space. Like it looks like it lifts up and you can put it down inside. Yeah, yeah. You're now now you're considering this, aren't you? <laughs> the I don't work out of my car enough. No, no. Um, Can I take it on the train? Yeah, where's my train <laughs> option? Where I just have a desk that folds out from, like, like in front of me, like, like from my from my jacket to work on things on the train. It's a belt. It's a it's the belt is it's the answer. Belt. Yes, it's, it's a belt. It just kind of folds down from your stomach. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> and you, voila, desk. it's a utility belt of sorts. So, oh, uh, this is some some great great options. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, John Carmen is this I uh, not so techie, but but uh, but we have to have the porn story for the week. Um and, and he has it. And, and this is from the Daily Mail, and it's how the porn industry could help reopen America with contracts tracing, testing, uh, etc. Because th this is the, okay, um, don't take this out of context. This is the kind of thing I'm looking at, not this in particular. Um, but seeing how industries are adapting. 
uh, I took some interest with uh, all elite wrestling are starting to do live Wednesday night shows again. And there was a tweet that they shared from the local union um, for how they were doing all the, you know, tracing and, and, and cleaning and, and everything to make sure everybody's safe on the job there. So when us as a smaller house have to figure out what do we do when we start doing events and wrestling shows, right? Like what is that, that kind of overhead going to look like? Um, there's some good points in here about I'm I'm afraid to throw this on here because even it, there's no there's no pictures of porn that are disturbing but the ads on here are disturbing visually uh, for some reason <laughs> it's weird it, it, it's like like there's a liver or something and there's nothing to see um but yeah so the, I mean they already did this between the AIDS epidemic and everything like they're kind of really good at this apparently from from what this article is telling us so that might be some place to look at for um um good moving you know forward as as people get back to work sooner or later here wherever that might be so all right so uh, thank you and again all those stories are uh, other than uh, patrick's was of course a comment on one of our videos over on facebook uh but everybody else over at the awesome cast facebook group um if you can if you want to uh submit anything over there for us to chat about on there and of course have on the show so I want to give a shout out to our friends at uh, yajagoff.com uh, while we're trying to figure out how to keep our sanity during the coronavirus sh- sh- shutdowns or even say shutdowns, apparently. Our friendly neighborhood, Yajagoff, is coordinating a live stream series, and we have for the last several weeks. You can go back and watch any of those uh, and it's to help us pass the time and also to help out the artists as well. Uh, all of the artists that are included on that, uh, usually a comedian and a uh, I'm gonna say magician, musician. Uh, we, we need a, I need to get a magician book for that thing now. Uh, <laughs> it's a whole new series we'll start. Um, they actually help them out since they're not getting any gigs um, to help with their careers and, and, and really getting shut down and, and stuck in place. Uh, we've had a good, uh, I want to say we've done seven weeks of this uh, so far and uh, looking to do at least one more. So please go check that out and check out the uh, Facebook page. Yeah, Jag off. We go live at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time uh, with our guests for the week. And I'm told there's a big surprise. I don't think they've announced it yet, uh, but there's a big surprise for our guest uh, tomorrow night. So I, I don't they even told me yet. So, <laughs> but uh, we, I didn't even find out I was sponsored until, until on the show, until we got, we were rolling live. So uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, go check it out. It's a good time. And uh, we've had a lot of fun with that over the last several weeks. So um, you jag off on the Facebook and you jag off.com for details. Okay, what do we have left in here? Um, Dutters, what, <laughs> what, what do you got? Uh, what do you got here for about pizza? Which is I, appropriate. So I don't, I don't, I don't know how to feel about it. Okay. I, I'm curious, you know, as, as someone in marketing, I do know how to feel about it. There is a new app. Okay. It's called Slice. Uh oh. Well, it's a marketing platform. I don't think it's out. It's it seems to be kind of rolling. It used to be called My Pizza. It's a slice is slice. This is not slice on Broadway. Yes. Slice has created a mobile app and website where diners um, can order. You can order custom pizza from your local independent pizza places, okay. which is awesome. And it looks like they're capping um, their fees at two, not two twenty five per order, which is awesome because if you've ever ordered anything from Grubhub and, and you're seeing a lot more of that now where these, when you're ordering from third parties that the actual restaurants aren't really making much at all by yeah. the time it's all said and done. Yeah. Um, but it looks like it is capping it um, at two twenty five an order, which is very cool. And, um, but they're trying to, so they're essentially they're just trying to help these companies uh, or these pizza places, local independent pizza places sell. So it's a big platform of, but it's called slice and that kind of bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. And I understand it's a great name. But it is a good name. Ooh. Yeah. Now, so. slice, slice our Broadway just needs to get on slice, and then we'll just wrap it all together. Yeah. Slice on slice. Slice yeah. on slice. Hey, you're just your mar- your marketing campaign writes itself. There you go. So, you're welcome. So I'll throw that out. <laughs> we know some of the marketing people over there too. So we'll get we'll give them a text too. So yeah, be up? like, what's up, up, Sam? This is a thing. <laughs> so put this out there. So, uh, but no, no, that's, I'm amazed. I'm amazed to see articles about apps raising money. I want to say in this economy, uh, it's like, like, I, I really, I really didn't expect that in this, in this, this day, you know, with everything going on. So, but cause I know a lot of that got paused. Hey, I mean, all the companies that we've been, we've been talking about for the last couple of years seem like they're going away. Automatic just 
close their doors out of nowhere. I just got a new dongle last year from them, and that was something I've had from. They're the ones that were the car dongle that would uh, uh, link to your phone and tell you how you're driving and have the location and 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 call emergency services automatically. That's a service I'm not going to have now uh, as part of my phone. Not that I've used it except for accidentally when I'm on a hill and I don't engage my brake and it thinks I've just been in an accident and tells me I'm calling emergency services right now. Here's a five second countdown, and I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> because Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, but other than that, so it works. Um, <laughs> we, yeah. It's been tested, uh, but um, yeah. So so, anyways, that's that's something that's going on. Um, Chilla, you want to hit us with one of your stories in here? Chilla. So one of the ones there I thought go. that was pretty darn cool was if you go to the kids in their downtime creating new ways to cheat. Um, <laughs> yeah. This, Person took an an old school Casio. I don't even know what the model FX nine nine one MS scientific calculator. Jeez, I've never seen this. Uh, yeah, wow. But, I mean, look at the the age of of the the calculator. I mean, it's old. But they pretty much came up with a way to. They added in an OLED screen. They added in Wi Fi. Um, with even some messaging functionality. So it was pretty cool the way they did it. They actually took out the solar power module and replaced it with a very, very small OLED screen, which, you know, would probably call attention other than they actually made it where the screen is activated with a magnet. So you hide a small magnet in your pen cap or under a pencil's eraser and it flips a switch inside the device which turns the the OLED on. <laughs> they they made it where it it has what they considered chat functionality but it's pretty much predefined um yeah like like I've, short we're, we're seeing short. help and then there's like a menu that they're scrolling through for for some yep. pretty or you could store you could store text in there so if you needed um uh uh, any of your stuff for uh, math I'm, I'm drawing a blank on geometry <laughs> like all the theorems and all of the so you you yes yeah, the so equations you, you preload you it need. with with some standard answers that you expect to be on the test to try to remember it yep okay interesting and then i mean if you think about it if you're chatting with someone else and you're like you come up with your own little code system of mm-hmm. you know you put numbers zero through a hundred for the questions on a test. And then even for multiple choice or true, false, you do A, B, C, D and And, T and F. And you're you're messaging using your calculators right there while you're taking the test in the same room. Yep. Hmm. 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 I I thought it was a pretty, pretty cool thing that that they threw together there. Yeah. It's, it's kind of brilliant actually looking at it because they didn't change much of the calculator itself. It's it's just, it's a little Wi-Fi chip and an LCD that they put in this thing. And that's like hardware wise, that looks like it's it. I mean, I mean, soldering and such too, but um, that's pretty great. Equipment wise, I mean, programming, I, I can't even touch that. Well, I'm guessing it's all pre built firmware that they just uploaded to the thing. It's not true, like you true. custom coded it. Like it was a code that was like, hey, this firmware works on this chip by this chip. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to see that with Raspberry Pis as I'm researching stuff too. We talk about the Raspberry Pi experiment over on the uh, uh, Awesome Cast School, by the way, over on Patreon. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so, so no, I, it, yeah, that's that's pretty brilliant. But so now somebody's going to be selling this on eBay, right? <laughs> well, they, they'll probably sell them in pairs, right? You at least need mm-hmm. one for you and your buddy. You need one for a buddy. Yep. Yep. Oh, geez. That is, there, at least as if there wasn't enough problems with the uh, Everybody trying to learn these days. So, uh, Katie, we have our weekly Animal Crossing update. Are you ready? Uh, you, you, yes. Would you like an update on Animal Crossing? <laughs> so I, <laughs> oh no. So I don't. It's very, it's kind of hard to see behind me, mm-hmm. but I'm currently. So there is a museum. All yes. the Animal Crossing has. Um, you get a museum. You gather fossils, and um, you, there's a section for fossils and dinosaurs, and there's a section which reminds me very much of Phipps with a fountain and flowers and butterflies. And I love just sitting in here because it's very calming and very cool. And uh, there's also a big giant aquarium 
So I'm getting my fill of my museums until we're getting closer to open Mm -hmm. time Mm -hmm. here from uh, my Animal Crossing game. And uh, so that's one of the fun things I've been doing with Animal Crossing. Are you are you like, you know, kind of using it as a screensaver, as an atmospheric screensaver uh, when you're when you're at home as you do other things? (laughs) Not so much. I should probably do it more often because it would probably make me like, feel a lot better. I feel like that's your own customizable, like how sometimes I just leave the Apple TV on because I just like, yeah. the, here are whales, here's a fly over this, this is Mars, you know, it's just a nice like, ah, oh, okay, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> you have your, your, your flowers. Yeah. And they've added, so the museum's got an art section now. Oh, okay. So th- there's a, a really um, sneaky fox that comes to your island and is selling art. And not all of it is the uh, actual artwork that you gets put into your museum. There's fakes. Mm-hmm. So do not be afraid to Google how to decide what a fake is because there's uh, easy ways to determine the, which ones are fake and which ones are not. But it's really cool because it's actual. It, the, the really cool thing I think about Animal Crossing is all the animals, the dinosaurs, the fossils, the artwork, the fish are real. And there are real things that you, exist in our world. And so you get to learn some things about stuff and like the artwork is real artwork. And then they'll just add like the fakes have just a detail that might be slightly different or, you know, someone in the, the portrait, it looks a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So it's really neat that it's actual, there's so it's, it's a learning experience on top of being a, <laughs> a fun escape for I me. I love it. I love it. Well, there's a story to go along with that this week as I, as I did, apparently uh, the, the, iOS Android version of po- of Animal Crossing Pocket Camp that came out in geez that was really 2017 that we were all playing that jeez um apparently it was the, the, it's at an all-time high downloads it, it downloaded a 4.5 had 4.5 million global downloads in March uh hit 7.1 million downloads in April and oh wow! I, and as somebody who hasn't picked up a Switch yet, I also downloaded it. I haven't gotten. It's more just like a holy crap. There's a lot of stuff here, as, as I've mentioned before. Um, but it is still like, hey, at least I'm playing Animal Crossing too. Uh, but but it, there is a lot to do there. It's got to be overwhelming if you drop in the first time. You know, not. I only just, just recently started Animal Crossing because mm-hmm. I tend to be someone like for video games. I use it as like a stress reduction, kind of focusing my anger. Like I need games where I can kick stuff and punch stuff. So I was like kind of a slow adopter Mm -hmm. of Animal Crossing. I was like, it sounds just like a frustrating experience where I have to do stuff and earn stuff and make money. And I just recently got started. So uh, I'm not that good at it yet, but I get it. Like I get the appeal. It's all your stuff. Well, are you on the phone or like the Switch version? The Switch version. The Switch version. Is is there, I don't know if I'm not good at Animal Crossing is a sentence that translates. Like is I feel like I don't feel like you can be bad at like there's no beating the game yeah. right right but like I want to see a game where like I, the conclusion is I have won and I have all the points like I feel like <laughs> the ending it's overwhelming it's like all right do I should I build that bigger house do I need these turnips well like I'm just sort of learning like what is valuable and what isn't it, well, I think no like big boss to fight or anything yeah well I think one of my favorite parts about Animal Crossing especially on the Switch is it's as involved as you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I think is really cool. It's it's fun. It kind of has like that Sims appear, appeal where you have a character and you can design a house and you can design your island and you could have the most ridiculous stuff on your island. Like I'm building a diner randomly for fun um, <laughs> just because I found, I found some pieces that I like. And Or you could dive deep dive into it. It's like I'm crossbreeding flowers because I'm, yeah, have, I have a lot of free time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's also a patient thing like I don't have my husband will play, play games for hours like he'll play Civ he'll play you know all like the really involved world games I'm like when are you going to start kicking stuff because really I just want to I need to like get out my aggression in video games and so I'm trying to like turn over a new leaf and be a little less violent I guess <laughs> so <laughs> I'll, I'll check back I'll let you know how it's going if I burned everything to the ground in a week or whatever <laughs> well it's it's re- it's funny for me if this is another funny random thing is um so one of my villagers asked me for a new um gre- like a new um i don't i forget what she she worded it like a new nickname or a new word to call a friend and i used jagoff 
So she's always like, Hey, how's it doing? How's it going? Jag off. I'm having so much fun on the Island. Jag off. <laughs> and now other villagers on my Island have also started calling me jag off. I really like to give you this gift jag off. This is what happens when you swear in front of the kids, Katie. They, they, they pick that <laughs> they, stuff off. Oh no. The word jag off now. <laughs> oh, is this, is this a thing where remember when they did the AI thing with Microsoft and it took like two days for it to start like shooting racist terms because oh, that's what yeah, people were putting awful. into it. Like, yes. is, is, is somebody out there just have the most belligerent uh, Animal Crossing possible with like slang terms or something? Oh, I'm probably sure. Bobby Cherry, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, you have already said that you play this essentially as a connection tool with your niece. Oh no! Yes. When is she going to start calling you a jag off? <laughs> does that translate over? Is it, is it going to? Is it does it cross islands? Is she going to talk she, to, if she talks to your friends on your island, are they going to influence her? Oh, yeah. They're totally going to call her Jagoff. Yeah. If she comes and talks to certain neighbors, she's going to say Jagoff. Um, I, she is, she has just turned five. Oh, no. So she, it's really funny because she's, she's, she can play the game independently. She's yeah. absolutely yeah. independent. We, we spent two hours yesterday. She calls me, we talk on, um, we talk on the phone and we play together. Uh -huh. And she was totally by herself playing this game by herself, knew what she was doing. It's amazing. So she doesn't quite know how to read all the things yet. Oh. Which is a, a win for Aunt TT. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hoping my brother is playing with her one day when he's reading these things and he just comes across his word and just like, I just can't. Because Aunt TT's a, it's, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're that aunt. Uh, no, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> uh, yeah. you, you you will know when it happens because you will get the message. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping we're we're chatting at the same time so I can just get his actual reaction to it and be like, oh yeah. He's the, like, do you realize that your islanders call you this? I'm like, no, that's weird. I in, don't know. How that... In the background, you just hear on the phone. What does that say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it could be worse. It could it could definitely be worse. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. We got we got time for just one more story here. Is there anything in the rundown you guys want to touch on? <laughs> uh, Kim, is there anything anything you want to hit on before we head out here? Hello? Anybody? I'm Hi, I muted myself. <laughs> oh, okay. I was talking to myself here for about 10 minutes. That was awesome. Yeah, no, I'm just keeping an eye on those food delivery services. Like you're saying, the restaurants don't make a ton of money. So yeah, keep an yeah. eye on that. Slim yeah. margins. Yeah, Uber wants to buy Grubhub too, so that might be. Oh. They need to be bigger. Did you see that today? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they they yeah. got they got they got to make up for some lost uh lost uh runway. Yeah, there. yeah, they'll be all right. They have a lot of money in the bank. So, um, yeah, I think I think this needs to be mentioned. Spotify is testing video podcasts. Yeah. Um, video will accompany three episodes of Zane and Heath and Fultered. Don't know the show. Um, I don't use Spotify and I know there's a mention in there about they do, um, uh, video kind of loops for, for album art, I guess. So I don't know what that would look like, feel like on the Spotify side of things. Also, I feel like that's a very mobile situation. So I don't know. I don't imagine, and maybe I'm wrong. I don't imagine a lot of people that watch this show, like actually sit down and watch this show on Facebook live or doing it on phone. I could be mistaken. I really should probably do a survey or something on that. Um, but like, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to, it's not going to get the numbers of audio, but I guess they're just kind of throwing everything out there right now. Right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I, I don't really use that much either. My kiddo really uses it a lot. Yeah. I think that's the only reason I have an account anymore. I mean, sometimes I do, but, yeah, I'm interested to see what they do with it. You have Google Music. I, I, I think I get three months free now that I have like Game Pass on Xbox, yeah. but I like do I want to? Like is it gonna can I I guess it, it will work with the Google Homes and Alexas and stuff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, anybody. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, A Train. Um <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah. But well either way, Kim, thank you so much for joining us on the show again. Oh my gosh, I'm happy to do it anytime, guys. Okay, where can everybody see, of course, what you are writing? I think they'll remember it. Oh my gosh, theverge.com. Um, I yeah, I write a lot, and especially on the weekends. So if you have news tips for me, we have a new game on the show because inevitably we will come across a story that we've shared, and you'll be in the byline because uh, it will just happen, and we have to we we got to have a, a special notice for that. Whatever you we... need, like the behind the scenes or what didn't make it into the article, let me know. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the inside scoop. Awesome, awesome. Fantastic. Go check it out at The Verge. Uh, we, the weekends. She's all over the weekends. Oh <laughs> so much all over the place. Uh, Katie, of course, you have all your updates going on. 
over on Instagram for the most part. I know my mom has been following you on the Facebooks. Oh, yay. Yeah, Facebook or uh, Kate Marie PGH on Instagram. I tend to put a little bit more on there because it's fun and easy. And I, I wore Christmas corgi pants to my chemo treatments today because they asked me if I had any dog pants. And I was like, I have one pair. They're Christmas corgis. <laughs> is it dog day Ed? is it or something is it no um a lot of um so there's i the nurses that i see some of them are dog there's cat people and there's dog people we know yes and some of them are dog people and they were like well don't you have any dogs because i keep wearing cats and unicorns to um in my star wars stuff to all my chemo treatments and they're like did you have any dogs and i had dogs as favorite christmas corgis Fantastic. And they brought so much joy to everyone today. I had no idea. So now I'm going to find more corgi pants. <laughs> uh, John to Chilla, ChillaTech.net. Chilla. Chill on the Twitter. Chilla. Yeah, oh, sorry. I cut you off. I did I did Chilla. the opposite. That's why I was doing it wrong. <laughs> We're doing great today. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. Not a problem. Uh, it's, all the, it's all the good pizzas. It's all the good pizzas. Exactly. So uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, producer Missy, hanging out, getting the notes. So I don't have to try and remember what we talked about later and uh, and everything. So uh, thank you, everybody that's joining us here live on the chat. A lot of you guys hopping in there. Uh, what's up, partner? What's up, Dustin? What's up, Justin? Uh, hanging out uh, there this afternoon, this evening with us. Uh, we will be back again, of course, live Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern on this platform, wherever you see us right now on, on the live feeds, Periscope, Awesomecast, uh, Social Charm Media, Twitch, uh, YouTube, as well as the Facebook page. Uh, we, see, well, we will see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.